It's interesting when a crate shows up on your door. I knew the FL Sun S1 was going to be big, but I didn't expect a delivery person to need a forklift to deliver it. Nevertheless, that's precisely what happened. I'm Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com and resident 3D printing junkie. Let's unbox this massive printer and see what it can do. The S1 is FL Sun's newest printer, but that doesn't really tell you the whole story. It's the culmination of seven years of research and development, seven years of advancement, and the amalgamation of every printer they've made before. The first thing to know is that the S1 is more than just a V400 with a chassis case. This new fully enclosed printer comes almost fully assembled and ready to print, and it's twice as fast as anything before it. In fact, at 1200 millimeters per second, it's faster than, well, anything on the market that I'm aware of outside of incredibly expensive commercial printers. First things first, however, I need to get it out of the box and get everything connected. To help do that safely, FL Sun's even kind enough to provide some removal instructions. You're probably starting to get the sense of scale here. The S1 is one very large printer. The build volume is a whopping 320 by 320 and 430 millimeters high. That makes it a great printer for a lot of full-size goodies like most helmets and a lot of cosplay gear that can be printed as a single piece instead of cobbled together. The device ships with two nozzles, a pre-installed 0.4mm and an included 0.2mm, both made of hardened steel and with an 80 watt ceramic heating element. The printer has a printing accuracy of up to 0.1mm, with layer heights ranging from 0.1 to 0.35, and a nozzle max temperature of 350 degrees centigrade. Obviously you'll need to pick up different nozzle sizes for those various layer heights, but suffice it to say there's a wide range of options available. The nozzle system supports a 1.75 filament diameter, handling PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, ASA, PVA, PET, PA, PC, PLACF, and more. Better still was the surprise that above the printer bed is an integrated dryer, complete with removable desiccant pack to keep your filament pliable and ready to print. It's only a single spool, but that's in line with the purpose of this printer, building single color items very, very quickly. To ensure that the extrusion of your material is as clean and spaghetti and blob free as possible, FL Sun has employed a dual gear direct drive extruder. This means that instead of a single gear to pull filament through the pipe, a second gear is also employed. This ensures that the filament is gripped adequately at all times, reducing any hiccups with consistently feeding the filament directly to the nozzle. This dual drive setup is a frequent upgrade for DIY 3D printers, so it's great to see it here by default. The next quality control item for this printer is the smart inclusion of AI elements. Now, most of the time when somebody says that they have AI in their equipment, it doesn't actually mean anything, other than maybe some sensors. Here we have an AI monitoring of a number of activities with sensors and cameras to support it. And it makes smart decisions based off what those cameras see. Here it can detect the first layer, any debris on the build plate, spaghetti or clog situations, and it can pause the print and prompt you for what to do next. It even supports filament detection and power off or zoom in case they're needed. There's also a LiDAR camera underneath, and when your first layer prints, the S1 pauses for a moment, activates a small red laser, and measures that layer for quality and adhesion. Once it's satisfied, printing continues apace until it's complete. These items combined ensure that you have a trouble-free print as often as is possible. In practice, I ran into issues with the spaghetti detection, as it incorrectly stated that the printer was extruding incorrectly when it actually wasn't. I set this to ignore and all following prints were trouble free, but obviously that's going to need some work. Before we dig too far into this review, there are a few terms you should probably understand. There are a few different types of printers. Resin printers are typically SLA or stereolithographic. These printers cure a thin layer of resin using light via a transparent resin tank, one layer at a time. The plate moves up and down thousands of times, popping loose from the resin tank over and over to create an object. There are a lot of chemicals at play and even more when the object is done as it has to be cleaned and cured before it's safe to be handled. The other type of printer for this discussion is FDM or Fused Deposition Modeling. This uses a thermoplastic filament, once again printed one layer at a time, which is extruded from a hot end that heats the plastic onto the layer below it to build up an object. Newer technologies have allowed these to be printed at such a small layer height 
as to be almost as good as the SLA method that I just mentioned. But the thermoplastic is often far less brittle, making them perfect for objects that need to be more resilient over time, like a gear or a prototype. Within the FDM family of printers, there are two methods of printing. Most printers are Cartesian, meaning that they move the heated bed around in the X and Y directions, with Z providing the height as the object builds up. On the other hand, and certainly gaining more popularity, is the Delta printer. Delta printers instead leave the build plate stable, but instead moves the hot end around using a three-point gantry system. This allows them to move far faster than the quote-unquote bed slinger type, and are far easier to level and have a higher success rate. The FL Sun S1 is a Delta printer. Now aesthetics are usually a secondary on a printer, but FL Sun has given it some special attention with the S1. The exterior is all steel with tempered smoke glass, making this a good looking printer. The S1 uses a large touch screen for providing all of your print information, including a picture of what you're about to print to ensure that you've got the right file selected. It's also how you set up your Wi-Fi, load your filament, and much more. The setup on that touch screen couldn't be simpler. The USB-C cables are all numbered, and the one non-USB cable can only go in one place. Easy peasy. When you boot the device, you'll be prompted for your language and then your Wi-Fi. The S1 has both a 2.4 GHz and a 5 GHz radio, so you'll be able to connect to just about any Wi-Fi available. Any updates are done over the air, and then it's time to load some filament. Loading filament is incredibly easy. A small slip collar allows you access to be able to thread the filament directly to the print head, and using the screen, that head will then heat the filament and pull it through. Frankly, it's the easiest filament load I've ever encountered, making switching colors and filament types something that takes less than a minute, and with a lot less swearing than my smaller printers. Plugging in the included USB, you'll find a copy of the latest FL Sun slicer, though FL Sun also promises that you'll be able to use third-party slicers soon enough. Selecting the S-Family printer and the 0.4mm nozzle default, and clicking Next will bring up potential profiles for any various filament types. I'm not sure what all I'd like to print, but this device can use just about anything, so I just left it all checked. PLA, PETG, ABS, carbon, TPU, it's all possible, so I'm excited to see what I can do with the S1 in the future. The next screen is view mode. If you're used to choosing your own adventure when it comes to 3D printing, then you'll probably be okay with Advanced or Expert, but Simple will get you through if you're new to 3D printing. This slicer is new to me, so I did a quick look around for potential options. File type associations, background processing, and other similar option defaults are found under the General tab. Switching to the Camera tab allows me to adjust the behavior of the camera controls for the slicer. This isn't the camera inside the printer, but more how you'll control your view when placing objects in the slicer. Similar to the Camera tab, GUI lets you further adjust what's visible by default as you work on your 3D models. Now, I figure I could do what everyone else does and print Benchy, the little boat that everyone seems to be in love with. In fact, Benchy's among the six preloaded print models that you'll find in the 32 gigs of storage inside the S1. Rather than do that, I figured I'd try something a bit more fun. Our little Yaucha friend here is absolutely set up for a resin print, offering a very real challenge for an FDM printer. I did some painting on support work in the slicer for more delicate pieces, but while I got the head ready to print, I went ahead and built out the stand for it as well. As you can see, the S1 has a camera inside the build chamber, capturing time-lapse video of your build in motion. Pretty cool, right? Before you print, the S1 does an 8-minute calibration that sets up the motor calibration, bed leveling, accuracy calibration, vibration compensation, flow calibration, and the build chamber camera. As you can see, the anti-vibration makes a world of difference in the print. While there are a handful of layer lines in this smaller print, you'll see those completely disappear on some of the larger contiguous surfaces that you'll see here in just a minute. Our Predator buddy turned out pretty great, but this is a big printer. Let's print something big, right? How about the Infinity Gauntlet from Marvel's Avengers movies? The gauntlet is pre-split into four parts, but it's important to note that the S1 has more than enough build volume to have printed it in a single go. I first set up the base. I'm using the cheapest filament I can get my hands on, and I'm steadfastly refusing to address the red warning area because I wanted to challenge the printer. Could it overcome the long bridge and extended extrusion challenges of a donut this big? Well, time will tell. As you can see, there is a small over-extrusion line that appears on the side. Nothing that can't be fixed with the sanding block, though. Similarly, the lettering came out perfectly despite the call for supports that I steadfastly ignored once again. The top, on the other hand, has a wobbly pattern on it that's just not part of the print. 
I see other people have replaced this portion with a block of wood, and I can see why. I guess I'll just take a sander to this. The gauntlet body didn't have very many supports on it, with only a handful of edges around the gauntlet cuff wrapper plates that needed attention after printing and the support removal. As you can see from the print, it's clean without any extraneous extrusions or layer shifts. Next up was the hand portion of the gauntlet, arguably the part that'll see the most attention as it's where the infinity stones will reside. The intention over time is to punch through the base and run lighting to the stones, as well as magnetize them so they can be magnetically attached and detached. I think it'll be pretty slick and the print came out rock solid so I have no doubt it'll hold up to the work. The only parts that required some additional attention after the print was the fingers of the gauntlet. On top were some layer lines and a circular pattern where the extrusion was whipped around in a semicircle. On the bottom of the fingertips we can see some additional circles where the supports were attached. These would need a bit of filling because the tricky part about primer is that it brings out absolutely every line and mark on a print. Now acrylic has a hard time sticking to FDM without primer, so you should use at least a very thin primer lest you lose details, but it can also hide some of your printing sins. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison between the unprimered and the primered results. There's still work to be done, such as the wiring I mentioned and including either printing the gems in clear resin or finding a suitable substitute, but this showpiece is coming along nicely. Shifting gears, I began to think about all the ways that a high-end printer like the S1 could be used for commercial applications. Rapid prototyping, 3D printed casts, 3D printed mods like this mini steering wheel, part holders, a T-Rex toilet paper holder, a jewelry holder, dental implant testing, and much more. Then I got to thinking about my own family. Both my mother and my wife have rheumatoid arthritis. Their ability to navigate simple things like bread ties, opening a jar, pulling a button through a hole, carrying bags, using chopsticks, opening a soda can, and more can be a daily struggle. With my 3D printer, I've made some of these tasks either easier or just outright possible. The chip clips are a huge hit, as are the adapters to make it easier to hold a pen or pencil. So are the sushi clips. A ring for her thumb keeps a paintbrush in my mom's hand and keeps a smile on her face. Now there is a consequence to moving as fast as the FL Sun S1 can, and that's quality. I normally print with the cheapest filament for my utility items because layer lines aren't really much of a concern on a chip clip. Now when I'm printing nicer items, and where quality matters, the layers would be unsightly, so I'll bump up to some name brand filament. What I discovered here is that the rapid filament isn't just a marketing ploy, it matters at these speeds. When using cheap filament I saw occasional extraneous extrusions, say that ten times fast, or layer line variations. Slowing the printer down eradicated these, so I know it's about the movement speed. Switching to rapid filament, and name brand didn't seem to matter as much as the designation, solved this problem nicely as well. The price difference between rapid and non-rapid is negligible, so just plan on that. It's not a surprise that FL Sun's own filament performed best, but the price difference is significantly higher, at least at the time of writing. As always, the last stop in our hardware reviews is warranty and price. The FL Sun S1 retails for $1,629 at the time of writing, though there are likely to be launch sales and other opportunities to save a few bucks if you're patient. If you're intending to get into semi-commercial printing, selling your products, or needing to rapidly prototype, that price will be paid back rather quickly in either time or profits. Obviously, if you're a more casual printer, there are more cost-effective options that are a lot slower and with a lot less features. The warranty on the S1 is two years for readers in EU, Switzerland, and Norway, with the rest of the world receiving a one-year warranty, which is actually fairly standard for 3D printers today. Consumable products such as the heating block, nozzle, metal pipe, belts, actuator temperature sensors, actuator heating rods, and spring steel heat beds are warrantied for 90 days, which is expected as they're more subject to wear and tear. Again, this is fairly standard in the 3D market. I've not found any manufacturer exceeding these numbers, so they're expected at this point. With an accuracy of 0.1 millimeters, a wealth of calibration tools, AI to detect problems, an integrated dryer box, a massive build volume, smart zone heating, 
unmatched speed by a very wide margin, and a whole lot more, the S1 is setting a new bar. Yes, it's pricey for the casual user, but it's also the very best non-commercial FDM printer on the market today, hands down, for anyone wanting to take their printing to the next level. FL Sun has been working diligently to constantly improve their printers for the last seven years, and the S1 is the culmination of their best work. The FL Sun Super Racer, the V400, and a lot of other competing products have clearly been amalgamated to create the S1, and we see that reflected in both the technological advancements we see on display here and the quality. It is simply unmatched for speed and reliability. If it's not readily apparent, I'm blown away by the FL Sun S1. It's exceeded my every expectation, albeit with a handful of bugs to squash remaining at launch. The 1200 mm per second speed is absolutely unrivaled in the industry, and the ease of setup even for a beginner is the best I've seen in an FDM printer ever. The calibration tools, 0.1 mm accuracy, AI tech, integrated camera, automatic leveling, and vibration compensation mean that the results are on par with many resin printers, something I didn't even think was possible with an FDM printer. Couple that with a large build volume, and this is your one-stop shop for all things cosplay or prototyping. But it can also be a fantastic way to make money or incredible things for display on your shelf. No matter what you choose, the S1 is ready to meet that challenge. It's an incredible accomplishment for FL Sun and the next stop for FDM technology. Truly, well done. I'm Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com, saying thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more 3D printing goodness. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you again very soon.